We're in Canada and we have our Thanksgiving in October. I've been working on some fall items and what really struck me as like the most beautiful colors for fall, which I feel like are on trend for me for the last year and still going is the Chateau paint inlay. So I did a big tray with the center portion of the Chateau um, with the stags on either side. So this is sort of what it looks like. It's very large. And I, I did the center portion um, on a tray. And I have all these beautiful bits left over and it's very fall. Uh, and what I started with, I actually had a smaller piece. So I'm actually gonna kind of wing it today with you guys live, which I can't believe I'm gonna do that. But um, I was hoping to have this pre-stained, but I'm actually going to just use a bit of stain on the edges um, after. Sometimes if you stain it a dark stain, if you're doing a white and you want it to look really rustic, um, that's what I do. I, I, if I want it to have a dark kind of finish, if I know I'm going to be painting it a light color and I want a dark finish that can kind of be showing through, I usually stain it first. Um, but today I didn't have a chance to, so this is a bit smaller. This is more of like probably about, I would say 12 by 24 inch piece of three quarter inch plywood. I would say that's one inch plywood. Anyway, it's a little bit heavy. But you could totally go thinner or, I don't know if I would want to go thicker because it might be too heavy, but yeah, good. I prepped this with one coat of um, chalk paint. Um, the reason why I use chalk paint is because, for two reasons actually, the paint inlays really um, need to be applied with chalk paint as, what I, as far as I have discovered. Um, because they have to go on wet paint. If you haven't used the paint inlays yet, you'll discover that here. Um, yeah. And then also with the chalk paint, it dries fast and it doesn't have any kind of finishy top coat that allows the ink to actually go on and dry fast. Whereas if there is any kind of an acrylic paint, I find if I, I it, you can stamp on it, but it takes a lot longer for the ink to dry. And it, when the longer it takes, the more increasing chance you have of smudging it. So I'm now going to apply the inlays as I apply the paint. I also have one other thing that's really handy to have is a roller, the brayer, sorry. The brayer is awesome for, and you wanna have a damp spun, a shot cloth. I like to use the mister too. Okay, so base, base coat already. Um, now, we're going, you want to apply the chalk paint quite thick, the second coat, and you want to get your paint inlay on there while it's wet. That's, that is key, 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 key. So I'm probably going to do this in like little stages. I've sort of got it figured out how I want um, my inlays to go on. Can you guys see that okay? Okay, so painted some white chalk paint there. Now I'm just gonna place it down, press it kind of down in place. Oh, wanna get it right to the edge there. And now, taking the damp shop cloth, going over it and sort of pressing, not too hard, you don't wanna be smudging it, but, or moving the paper. It doesn't move very well once it's placed down on the wet chalk paint. Personally, I like the rustic edge that it gives, um, especially if you are adding some, any kind of an antiquing finish on it, like a, a wax or something, it actually gives it a real aged look with those lines in there. But if you're wanting it to be smooth, the brayer really helps with that. So then you just don't have to press too, too hard, but a little bit of pressure with the brayer or a brayer. I really love these IOD brayers. And then just let it sit. So then we just keep applying them. Let's move on to the next one. Right. This piece I want it over here. I don't want to clog it up too much because I do want to have some space to stamp my little phrase in there. Um, I really like this portion. It looks like it's got almost like a pumpkin or a pear or something. It just, it reminds me of fall fruit. So I really wanted to get that one on there, even if it had to just sort of hang off the edge here. So. Adding more paint, and you want it to be quite thick, like I said. 
place it down. It doesn't matter if you get a little bit of the paint on top of the paper, um, it's gonna peel off. Once you get it down, you can kind of place it down with your finger and then I like to go over it with the shop cloth. Sort of pressing it right into that wet paint. So it's kind of doing a paint on paint transfer type thing. All right, moving on to the next piece. Get it on quite thick, but not too, too thick that it's gonna smush um, your paper completely. Oh yeah, did I do that with the brayer? No, I didn't. Go over it with your damp shop cloth. It doesn't have to be soaked, just damp. Um, I used to think it had to dry completely. I'm discovering that um, some of the more distressed looking ones actually look really cool if you don't let them dry um, overnight completely and they actually come off really easily um, with a little bit of uh, just going over it with the shop cloth again after 20 minutes or so. I might give um, the hairdryer, take the hairdryer to this one um, just for time's sake. Um, but I do find that when you dry it too fast, then the paint doesn't actually come off as easily. That's what I have discovered. This last big piece, biggest one. And don't worry if your paint looks uneven. Um, you'll probably take a bit of a sanding block and I mean, this is pretty rustic pattern and I'm doing it on plywood. <laughs> Smooth it out right, so that it's all getting right into that wet paint. That, that definitely the transfer is important, um, the paint on paint and the embesh, enmeshment of the paint on the inlay with the paint on whatever it is that you're applying it to. Using a, a spray. spritzer also is handy. If your shop cloth is getting too dry, you feel like it's getting too dry. All right, so far, we've got all the inlays on. That really didn't take very long. Now it's just a bit of a waiting game. I'm gonna take the hair dryer to the portion I wanna stamp and we can probably start stamping. So it's also okay to go over your inlays. It's okay for them to start drying as well. Normally what I have been doing in the past is actually letting them completely dry overnight and um, then reactivating them with water with a damp cloth and sprayer and then peeling it back and that works as well But what I'm discovering is that you don't necessarily have to let them wait like dry all night long completely dry so It's gonna dry the rest of this Okay, it's definitely dry to the touch where I want to stamp Okay, gather here. Hopefully this fits now because I actually went I might have to just say gather with great grateful hearts. I think I will do that. This one's gonna be different. Cause I don't think I have enough space for the gather here on this one. And that's okay. All right, so lining up your letters. This is the farmhand font. It's actually one of my faves. This one on the retro, I love the retro. I use it so much. I love being able to paint it. In with inside different colors. So this one, I'm just gonna start with the gather, load it up with ink. <gasps> oh, thank gosh, the paint inlay is there. My R fell off, ah, and my G. I'm notorious for not totally cleaning my stamps as well as I should, and then when you don't do that, they don't adhere to the. Uh, they don't adhere to the plastic backing as well. Your thin mount. Okay. That's okay. Oh, I didn't quite press that down. This is what happens when you don't use a thin mount. A little bit trickier, not gonna lie. Don't know if you guys know about the baby wipe tip. That's what we clean our stamps with. And I don't know if you guys know if you haven't um, done anything with the stamps before, but condition them first 
when you get them out of the package, peel the first layer of plastic off, take a light sla uh, sanding block and just give it a light sand kind of in both directions. Really helps with um, getting a nice good grip so it's not so, doesn't slide around as much on when you're using it. All right, there's gather. So I like to uh, sort of place it down and then just get all the letters up as much as you can. The grid mounted thin mount is awesome for keeping things lined up nicely. Load it up with ink. And any of the fonts would work. You could match, mix and match up any of your good, the fonts that you prefer, um, depending on how size of a piece of wood you decided to do this on. You could even go really big with the retro font if you wanted to. Okay, pressing down on each individual letter so that you're getting nice coverage. Try not to shift. Meanwhile, your paint inlays are drying nicely. Of course, if you wanted to do your stamps over top of the paint inlay, then you would have to do that process. Um, the paint inlays first, let it dry, and then, then do it. But I sort of had the perfect space, and I, and I designed it that way, knowing that I wouldn't be able to go over top in 45 minutes of time just in case those inlays didn't dry enough. I'll just go back in and do the TH of the width, probably on their own. The smoother your plywood is too, the easier these are going to stamp on. As you notice, the gather um, didn't stamp in a few spots, but I like that personally, because I like that distressed look, it goes with the distressed, aged look of the inlays. I use chalk paint because the ink dries super fast on the chalk paint. I would not be able to do this touching if I was doing it with something with an acrylic um, finish or something because it would, doesn't seem to dry, the, the ink doesn't seem to dry and it, I have smudged it and it's heartbreaking when you smudge it because you really have to fix it up with paint by starting over. So I'm going to take off the inlays. Um, they're not completely dry. Um, this one might be. This one's really, this was the first one I did. So let's just sort of spray it. Over it again. Um, you'll find that when you do these, this paper will, go it'll dry and and you'll be able to tell that it's dry because it goes more opaque and you don't see the inlay as much through until you get it wet again however look at that it's coming off i love this one i love it i love the colors i love the rustic look that it gives I'm really distressed Oh, that is actually dry. Okay, let's go over this. And there we go. All right, so there it is. That was so easy, look at that. And I mean, you could put whatever, you don't have to put Gather with Grateful Hearts. You could do anything. You could do, this would be beautiful um, with an address number on it or you know, last name, established, whatever. Um, so yeah, just used portions of the Chateau inlay on a piece of plywood. I, I had a base coat of chalk paint. I will actually stain the edges of this after, and I will probably use that stain to give a bit of um, an antiquing sort of look to the edges. And I'll probably use some antiquing wax just around the edges as well to seal it in. Thank you so much for being here for, with me today. And uh, I hope you guys are inspired to try the inlays. You know, once you start with a small project, that's what I did. I literally started with a, I had a 
12 by 12 wood heart and I, I started with this wood heart and then I did some coasters and I started with small projects and um, if you do start following me and you go to my social media, my Facebook and my uh, Instagram pages, um, I will be uh, posting today the first piece of furniture that I did with the inlays. Um, and it really turned out great. I did the drawer fronts and it turned out beautiful. Grateful for IOD, grateful for all of you joining me today. Um, hope you guys have a wonderful day. Take care everyone.